What's up guys? This video I'm going to be reviewing Iron Blade Medieval RPG. This will be one of my last Gameloft game reviews, at least for now, and I think this one is a little more interesting because Iron Blade is the only Gameloft game I'm reviewing that isn't a first person shooter. They do have a MOBA and some other games, but after getting into YouTube again, I don't feel like wasting my time playing another grindy, broken multiplayer mobile ported Gameloft game. But luckily for Iron Blade, it doesn't have a broken multiplayer. It's still a mobile port and grindy, but I give this game more leeway because it's not as grindy, not as annoying and broken too. I'll get into that more. And just like the other Gameloft game reviews, I'll start with the campaign. Pretty simple. There's 11 chapters with about 5 missions each. You can unlock and beat each mission on 4 different difficulties with increasingly better rewards. In about 50 hours, I beat the game on normal. I was one chapter away on beating it on hard. I almost beat it on extreme and I only completed 2 chapters on brutal. The only thing the difficulty really changes is their health and damage. It's all there just to be grindy, but considering this is a single player focused RPG and it's a game left game, the grind is pretty reasonable. I completed about 75% of the campaign in about 50 hours. Most people will probably beat the campaign once, but if you want to grind, you can. It's a good free way to get better gear too. And like in all Gameloft games and most free games, I try not to spend money and see how much it matters, so the campaign helps out with that. And out of all the Gameloft games I'm playing, Ironblade is the least pay to win. You want to know why that is? Because this game doesn't have a real multiplayer. I'll take that as a gift and a curse. On one hand, there's no multiplayer, but on the other hand, the campaign and the almost multiplayer mode is more enjoyable, and yes, I said almost multiplayer mode, cause since this is a mobile game, there are fortress attacks. You get a fortress to level up and guys to defend it and you can level them up too, just like the other Gameloft games. You attack other people's fortresses with AI controlled guys. This might be copied and pasted from other games, but it's way more balanced than Sniper Fury. You also collect gold and there's a leaderboard. You also get rewards at the end of each season, which is actually pretty cool. But moving on from the fortress, you have the Legacy Tower. You basically go up this tower with 110 floors and you can beat each floor to get to the top. Each floor gives you this currency to make items in the forge. I like the idea of this, considering all the modes in this game, Legacy Tower is pretty easy going and an easy way to get stuff. You can even auto skip a certain amount of the floors depending on your total damage and armor. I was able to auto skip to floor 84 by the time I was done playing. It's also like a daily thing, so you can skip almost every day for free materials which is really convenient. Then we have the Tower of Trials. I have less experience in this one, but this one is more of an event. It's very similar to the Legacy Tower, but instead of being a daily thing, it lasts about a few days. There's also more risk and more to gain. Like I said, I didn't play much of this, but it's good for this game to have different ways to play. Up next we have another fortress like game mode and that is the sisters arena. You pretty much attack bases like before, but this time you earn these keys to unlock these chests to get random stuff. But this one is like an event type thing too and it's okay. Again, another mode to have a bit of variety. Even if you barely play it, you can still get a few free chests. Now moving into the last game mode that's pretty self explanatory, we have the daily dungeons. This one is pretty simple, every day there's a different mission that gives you different rewards. It doesn't sound too exciting for the last mode, but it's the fastest way to get certain materials. The higher difficulty you're on, the more stuff you get. By the way, you upgrade your weapons and gear to progress in everything, so certain modes help with that more than others. You also want to do your daily quests, but not the mythic quests. I found them too hard and not worth it. There's a ton of in-game achievements that give you free stuff. 
You'll also want to join a clan for little rewards and benefits, but mostly to remind you that other people actually play this game. And that's the thing, not that many people play this game. I'm sure the mobile version is fine, but I mean on PC, to no surprise. This is Gameloft's least played game on Steam, but I think that's mostly because it's the last game they added on Steam, at least at the recording of this video. Iron Blade released in 2017 but came out in 2019 on Steam. Not that this game even needs a thriving community to survive, it's mostly single player and you don't even need active players for the multiplayer like features. You can essentially monetize this game forever. I think that's what Gameloft goes for and from a business perspective, I kinda respect it. This is also a mobile game so I hate to admit that's all pretty smart. It's hard to hate cause this is a free mobile single player game, but that's why I rate some mobile games with two different scores. I think that's about everything though. Some of the things you had mentioned in other game reviews don't really matter as much here. Like a story, Iron Blade has one, but I didn't care about it and you wouldn't care about it. The graphics aren't that good, but it's a mobile port, so what'd you expect? And oh boy, the gameplay. This is the most mobile ported part of the whole game. So get this, right? You can use your mouse to attack and block, and you can use your keyboard to use an arrow and some abilities, but not to f***ing move. You do not control your character moving or aiming at all. You can play this game one-handed if you really wanted to. Hell, you don't even have to play the game at all with this autoplay feature that just plays worse than you anyway. I actually like this feature for the convenience, but the gameplay sucks and will be the first thing that tests your tolerance and enjoyment of this game. All that being said, I thought this game was casually convenient, and that's a word I'd use to describe this game a lot, convenient. This game is either impossible due to you being too weak, or casually easy. The gameplay is tolerable, but nothing complicated or engaging. The only variety in the gameplay is doing quick or strong sword attacks and using different abilities. I actually think the most skillful thing you can do in this game is to time your arrow attack instead of blocking to save health. Same thing with your abilities, but that's it. The depth doesn't come from the gameplay, it comes from the numbers of the enemy health, your weapons, your armor, your gold, the currencies, you get the point. Anyway, that should be about everything I wanted to talk about. This is another one of those situations where I played this game months ago and I'm mostly going off memory. I mostly remember casually playing and enjoying this game, not too much thought or effort put into it. It was like a lazy game you can play with one hand. I think you have to have the right approach or a certain attitude coming into this game. It could be pretty chill and casual game to play. You can even be lazier and, you know, raid the missions without even playing them at all. You know, just an easy game to play. But like I said earlier, I like to rate mobile games with two separate scores. One as my score and the experience I had considering I played it on PC. Then I rate it as a mobile game, like me imagining the game on mobile or something. That being said, I'd personally rate this game a 5 or a 6, and as a mobile game, probably a 7 or an 8. Not considering either of those things and just rating the game, it'd probably be lower than both of those. I also don't like comparing my scores with different games, like comparing a really good RPG to this game, maybe with a similar type of game, but I think looking at and reviewing a game with a score is different than comparing two games with two different scores. That's why I'll be comparing two modern combat games soon. One I like, and one not so much. So be on the lookout for that. But yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been kind of fun looking at Gameloft's PC ported games and reviewing them in a certain way and playing them so you don't have to. Speaking of that, check out my other Gameloft game reviews. I've put a good amount of time into each game before reviewing it, so please watch my videos to justify that. I mean, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want to watch more, check out a playlist down in the description, comment any opinion you may have, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.